All right, so hello and welcome everyone to another tutorial of PyQt Graph. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to do um, real, real-time sensor data plotting. And uh, once we start using PyQt, you will immediately see the difference why it's so much better to do it um, with this library because it's uh, rendering in real time without any or almost no latency. And so to get started, I would like to fake emulate or simulate some uh, sensor data. So I will start by creating a file and I will call it server.py. So server, I call it server because we are basically sending uh, and getting data from the, from the, from this file. And I would like to set up a server for doing that. And the way to do uh, to set up a server by the easiest uh, in the easiest way is to use a library called Flask. So um, just to get started, make sure to go here and install our pip install Flask. And we also gonna need uh, some other libraries, but they are all um, they're all a part of the of the standard Python libraries. So just make sure to install Flask. So the next uh, step, I would like to import Flask, or from Flask, I would like to import some um, some modules. In this case, Flask request, or sorry, response and JSONify. And basically Flask is the model itself or the, the model of from Flask, which will initiate a server. Response is to make sure we can do, um, to do HTTP uh, responses. And JSONify is to turn uh, Python dictionaries into a JSON format. And in the case that these uh, terms are not clear to you, I would highly suggest to search them up quickly. They shouldn't be the uh, hardest thing to understand. Now we can go and import time, which we will need to, um, to regulate the sensor data. And I'm gonna also import random in order to, to generate some fake data. And also I'm gonna import another library called threading. Now threading uh, is a library integrated in Python, which allows me to, um, <clears throat> to start a new thread. In, uh, in essence, it means that I can run two applications at the same time um, without disturbing the, uh, the data flow. And I will. This will be a bit more clear once I do the. I start the, the the server itself. So the first step is to go ahead and initialize this Flask uh, module, and it takes an import name. So in this case, I'm gonna use under slash under slash name under slash under slash. And what this is basically is um, in Python there are some default. Uh, parameters or default va variables. In this case, name it means the name of this uh, of this file, and it puts here the the file directory in the Flask uh, as a parameter for the Flask module. All right. So the next step would be to initialize a so-called data data buffer in which we hold some uh, the fake data that we are about to generate. So I will just say buffer to hold uh, to hold fake data. And the idea behind the buffer is that we uh, always modify the, the array, uh, the buffer array, so that we remove, for example, the first element and add a new element at the end. In this case, the length of this data buffer stays the same. And what this allows us to do is to uh, prevent any memory leaking um, errors so that it doesn't uh, go uh, into the um, into the yeah um, 
the size doesn't go unlimited so we are um, restricting it to only a specific value and the next thing to do is to initialize a function so this is a function to generate these uh, the fake data I, I will do a uh, hundred Hertz which this basically means that we are getting hundred values per second and I will call this function sensor data generator and it has a while true loop so while the um, while the true statement is running so basically forever uh, or as long as the server is running or the script is running we're gonna do uh, some generating some data so in this case I will initialize um, a Python uh, dictionary or a Python object where I have a timestamp and in this case I can use the time dot time method so I get, get the exact milliseconds um, of the time right now and also I'm gonna uh, introduce a that um, the key value which has the value random dot uniform between minus one and one and I forgot to put an apostrophe here so that we have uh, or sorry a comma so that we uh, separate these two um, two objects and here I just basically use a random uh, library to create um, a random number between minus one and one in this case it's float uh, that's why we use a uniform and now comes the um, the function or the uh, the code for um, restricting this buffer that I told you about so I can say if the length of the array itself is above 100 so if I have more than 100 elements I will basically pop or remove the first element um, of this array and I will attach sorry I will attach the uh, the element or the sensor data value that was uh, initialized here and uh, to this to the end of uh, this array by using the append keyword and passing in the sensor data variable and I will also say time that sleep um, and pass in 0 0.01 seconds and this basically means um, uh, do this and do this while true loop and sleep or like uh, it basically means that we are stopping um, every 0 0.01 seconds so we are getting um, 100 data points per second so if I said for example one then it would be uh, getting one data for one second and then the next second I get the second data points and in this case I want to be 0 0.01 so it's 100 Hertz and this would do it for the generate sensor data generator function uh, next up is um, a new uh, thing which is a so-called decorator function uh, I can access a decorator function by saying this add keyword and uh, in this case I would like to decorate the function called route from the flask uh, flask module and what decorator basically means is just we are overriding the function with our own uh, functionalities so in this case I would like to modify the URL slash data by saying the methods equals to also saying the methods equal to get so whenever we are calling this URL with a method of get um, we are gonna do something and in this case we're just gonna say get data and what this function does is that we are simply returning the data buffer now I could leave it like that but uh, just as a good practice we always have to turn this object this Python object into so-called JSON format so that it is um, accessible by other um, so it is accessible by browsers and it is a generally a good uh, point to inform yourself why JSON is so important to use in uh, whenever we are sending data from a server for example
So it's not needed in our case since we are only using Python internally, but it it is very helpful to um, to always turn the data into a so-called JSON object. And yeah, that would be it. Now, uh, the next thing I would like to do is initialize the so-called thread. And I can do that by saying, by calling the threading library, the thread module on the threading library. And I pass in the target equals to sensor data generator. So the function that we initialize from the beginning. And I will also pass in a keyword called diamond equals true. So uh, threads are very simple. You can just imagine it as a process that is running in the background. So it's not interrupting any code here. It's running separately from any, um, from any other code. So uh, in this case, it is telling uh, Python that you should run this function separately from the main code. And the keyword diamond is to basically say, run it without interrupting any, uh, so run it separately without interrupting the main functionality. This is just a keyword uh, that you should use in this case uh, to make the program work. So otherwise it will, um, it will not be really simultaneous. And the next thing is to basically start this thread. So I just call them function dot start. And obviously I also have to run the server in this case, in this case, just say app dot run. There are some keywords that can use here, for example, debug or threaded, but in this case, it's okay to just leave app dot run since this is just a simple tutorial on how we can generate some fake data from a server. Now you can run this. And you can see here, uh, it's logging already that it's running on this URL. So if I go to my browser and I call this, as you can see, it says not found. And the reason for that is that we didn't define really what happens if we just call the home URL. So just the URL itself. But what we did do is define the so-called data or slash data URL. And since the browser is automatically doing a so-called get method, when we call this, we are get we are simply uh, getting back the JSON file with uh, fake generated data. So in this case, I have hundred objects um, with with the uh, um, elements of timestamp and values. So the timestamp is the exact milliseconds we are at right now, and the value is a random number between minus one and one. And if I refresh this, we get some new values since this is running in the background without interrupting the main uh, server functionality. And it's working perfectly as you can see. 